What's up, you fucking bozos? It's Bloodstained Lane, aka while you're at home jerking off with your locked door. I'm busting a motherfucking nut watching who will win at UFC 134. And I just wanna ether all you fucking jerkwafts, you fucking lowlifes, you fucking zufa zombies. You people shouldn't be watching a fucking sport of MMA, okay? Fuck yourself, fuck your life. You gotta have fun, and actually, do you know what? I find that guy to be the funniest guy on um, YouTube. Anyways, let me get this off. Let me get myself out of this horrid gear. And let's get talking. Now, being a fan of MMA and being a fan of pro wrestling, I think we've always been very fortunate to see uh, matches or fights that are considered dream fights. Uh, when I think about them, I think of matches like Vandalay Silva versus Chuck Liddell and how long we had to wait to see that. And we thought we were going to see it in the Pride Grand Prix and then it never happened. And then, obviously, several years later, we did get to see it. I think of things like, for me personally, getting to see Randy Couture and Brock Lesnar was quite a, a special thing to see. I'd always wanted to see that, uh, even way back when Brock was um, in WWE and Randy was a UFC heavyweight before he moved down the weight class. I was always intrigued to see how that would happen. Um, Randy Couture and Noguera was another one that was always interesting to me. And of course, seeing um, Hoist Gracie and Matt Hughes. Those were the dream matches for me that I always enjoyed seeing. And even BJ Penn and St. Pierre, even though it was a rematch, it was a dream match to me and I felt we were very fortunate to see it. And then as a pro wrestling fan, you get things like Kurt Angle versus Shawn Michaels, which was absolutely tremendous and I never thought we were going to see that and the topic of that of this video should I say is what matches as a wrestling fan or what fights were the best or in your opinion the dream fights or dream matches the best ones to never have happened and I'm going to say three for each category and I'll probably end up saying more because I always break the rules and I'm going to leave it at that, I'll give you my reasons why, and then I'll just leave it open to the rest of you people. So, write some comments, say what you like. Even if it's something that you feel is ridiculous, look, just put it down there. I mean, it's it, it's always interesting to know what everyone else wanted to see and what wavelengths we're all on. So, I'm going to get started. And the first one, and this is a pro wrestling one, and it also extends to MMA because it could have happened in either... And to me, it's a travesty and a shame that Kurt Angle never went to the UFC in the uh, late 90s uh, because of money and finances. And it was always a shame to me that Kurt Angle and Ken Shamrock never had an MMA fight because the appeal of an Olympic level wrestler versus a UFC super fight champion in an MMA circle was very intriguing to me. And I always wanted to see that. And then when we fast forward several years later and Ken goes back into pro wrestling and is in the WWF and I actually thought was very underrated as a pro wrestler and then eventually left and went to Pride and just as he left, Kurt Angle had just made his start on TV and Kurt Angle went on to become what he became in this super wrestler, this well-rounded talent, a guy that could wrestle, a guy that could talk, a guy that could do everything. Uh, I really wanted to see that. I really wanted to see in the WWF at that time. The WWF in a pay-per-view setting put the world's most dangerous man, Ken Shamrock, the UFC super fight champion versus the Olympic gold medalist, the guy, the, the prodigy of pro wrestling. And then for me, the appeal just went into overdrive when Kurt started using, of all things, the ankle lock. And I don't know why, but that just really got me even more interested in wanting to see that. Because now you really could have, like, Kurt's a fantastic talker. And now you could have Kurt say things like, well, I'm using this move and I'm the only person to use it. And then, of course, when Ken returns. And actually, at one point, it looked like it was going to happen. And I believe around 2002, there was actually talks. And I do believe Jim Ross acknowledged this, that there were talks of bringing Ken Shamrock in and to feud with, sorry, it's late, to feud with Kurt Angle. And I remember WWF Magazine at the time hinting at it when they did this predictions for 2002. And one of the ones for Kurt Angle was Kurt would 
become more and more sinister with this ankle lock and he would cross paths with a world's most dangerous opponent and that was hinting at Ken Shamrock and again it just it was a huge shame that we never got to see that uh, as a wrestling fan and as an MMA fan it always would have been something that I think really could have captured the imagination of you know both audiences uh, another wrestling one that I really want to talk about would be and I could be wrong about this but Eddie Guerrero versus Shawn Michaels was another one I always wanted to see. Uh, I was a huge, huge, huge fan of Eddie Guerrero and a huge fan of Shawn Michaels. And <clears throat> I always wanted to see that way back when you had this influx of high, fly high flyers and luchadors coming into America. And I always wanted to see the Eddie Guerreros, the Dimalenkos, the Benoits, the Jerichos and all of those guys. Uh, go in there with Shawn Michaels because I was just kind of bored of seeing Shawn wrestle Diesel and uh, you know just guys that like Sid Vicious I wanted to see what would have happened if you know those guys came over you know in the, the late 90s and were in the WWF and it was another time you know where they were both in the company at the same time obviously Shawn you know retired briefly from wrestling in the late 90s and then it looked like at one point they were going to Revisit, well, it looked like at some point they could cross paths. And I even remember after the dream match of Kurt Angle versus Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania, thinking to myself, well, next year they need to do Guerrero and Shawn. They need to do Guerrero and Shawn. And unfortunately, you know, what happened with Eddie Guerrero happened and he died. And it's a, it's a great shame that that match never took place because I really just imagine what they could create. You know, they're both fantastic professional wrestlers, both fantastic promos both blah, both both have great appeal with the audience and just to see what they could do and what they could create out there for the fans would have been amazing and the other one that I would love to have seen uh, and this is a surprise to some people but it kind of shows you some of my uh, old school knowledge and I'm sure a great Liger if he's watching this will appreciate this but I always wanted to see and I could be wrong I could be wrong I always wanted to see Kenta Kobashi versus Ric Flair. And from my understanding, I don't think they actually worked a full-on program or a feud. I don't even think they had a match together. Uh, then again, I'm kind of late coming into Kobashi's career, but I'd always hear about him when I was younger, and I would always hear about this great Kenta Kobashi and just how he was basically the best in-ring performer of the 90s, in a lot of people's opinions. And I always wanted to see what would happen if this mythical, legendary figure from Japan, what he could do with Ric Flair. And that always intrigued me. And an honourable mention, actually, to the great Muta and Undertaker. That's a shame that that never happened. And it's also a shame that, you know, one of the matches we wanted to see this year was Sting versus Undertaker. Uh, and people were excited when they thought it was going to happen. And for the foreseeable future, it looks like I don't think we're ever going to get to see that. So it's a shame that we never... You know, as fans, got to see what would have happened if you had Sting and Taker in the ring at the same time. I don't particularly care for what quality of a match it would be, but it's just the fact that you have the mainstay WCW star, the guy that was created outside of the WWF, with the guy that was created inside of the WWF, never interacted before, and with WrestleMania as a setting. Heaven forbid, though, someone asked Taker to lose at WrestleMania, because I actually think he believes that streak is real, but that's another story anyways. Um, going back to MMA and MMA fights that we never got to see and the best dream matches we never got to see, there's a very, very obvious one. And for fans of Randy Couture, you know exactly where I'm going with this. And it was a shame to me that we never got to see Randy Couture and Fedor Emelianenko. And that was another fight I always wanted to see. I was always intrigued by it. And then... Around the time Randy lost to Chuck Liddell the second time, I kind of lost interest in that. And then when Randy retired, I never thought we'd see it. And obviously Fedor was becoming what he was becoming in pride. And then Couture comes out of retirement and fights, to, and fights Tim Sylvia and beats the living bejesus out of him. And it just created this interest in me again. And all the pride fighters were coming over at this time as pride was starting to come to a close. And I was like, we might see it. We might see uh, Kotor Noguera. We might see Kotor Krokop. And then I was like, we might even see Kotor Fedor. 
and then it it looked like at some point we were going to see it and then it didn't happen and then it looked like it was going to happen then Kotor fought Gonzaga and then after that he said he wanted to fight Fedor and I was like man we're going to see it we're going to see it and of course negotiating with the Russians as Dana said is a headache and then it never happened and then Randy had the dispute and I thought oh we're going to see it outside of the UFC and I always remember the Affliction pay-per-view when Tim Sylvia and Fedor fought and then afterwards they had Kotor in the ring with Fedor and it just not often do I get this yeah you, know, you know when I watch MMA or pro wrestling but I just felt this 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 going really really fast I was like, we've got to see it, we've got to see it. And then, unfortunately, it never happened. Now Kotor's retired and, you know, Fedor's really at the tail end of his career, unfortunately. And it was, it's a shame that we never got to see that. That was going to be one of those legacy fights, I think, just for the sport in general. And be interesting to know what people would have thought of that, who they thought would have won and what approach would have won. I still go back and forth from that right now. And it's a shame that we never... Got to see the answers to that one. Um, I was always intrigued in seeing Matt Lindland and Anderson Silva. And I know a lot of people wanted to see that. I always thought Lindland matched up very well with Anderson as he was a very good wrestler. And I always felt Anderson, and it's been proven, Anderson has the most trouble with wrestlers. And it was a shame. It almost happened at Cage Rage, I believe. And obviously Anderson got disqualified. I think that was the show I'm talking about. Correct me if I'm wrong. And it was always a disappointment to not see that. Um, I always wanted to see Frank versus Ken Shamrock because I always felt, in my opinion, that Frank was the better fighter of the two, always. Even when Ken was at his prime, I always felt that Ken strayed off of a game plan very easily, whereas Frank was very technical and very cerebral and I always felt was the better fighter anyways. I always wanted to see Frank Shamrock versus Kazushi Zakuraba just because of the entertainment factor and the fact that they have the most aesthetically pleasing styles in MMA at that time. And it's a shame they never got to, uh, you know, go in there against each other. And I'm going to wrap it up with this last one. And a lot of people are going to know which one I'm talking about when I say this. And it's been mentioned before, so I'm going to say it. It's a shame we never got to see Matt Hughes and Kazushi Zakuraba as well. That, to me, considering Matt Hughes is considered the American Gracie Hunter, and you have the original Gracie Hunter, and you have guys who, in my opinion, Zakarabo really is perfect for 170. And it was just a shame that that never happened, because, again, it's one of those fights where you have lots of questions. Well, what if Zakarabo does this, but what about Matt Hughes' wrestling, and what will happen, what will happen? And, again, it was a fight that, never happened and for the foreseeable future probably will never happen uh, given where Zakaraba is right now and given the fact that Hughes kind of looks like he wants to retire very soon so that's a shame I also want to give out an honourable mention to Bas Root and, and Randy Couture that was another one, Couture versus Vanderlei Silva, I mean I could go on and on and on and on but that's why I want to stop so everyone out there uh, who's watched this and bared with me and thank you, it's like half two in the morning, so I barely sound coherent. Let me know what fights, if it was MMA, that you wanted to see that never happened. Uh, Let me know what pro wrestling matches that you wanted to see that never happened. And it doesn't matter how daft they sound. Listen, I don't care if it's Michael Cole versus Viscera. If you wanted to see it, it was a dream match to you and it never happened, feel free to write it. I won't judge you. Uh, Anyways... Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching and uh, comment, rate, subscribe. And I should be back tomorrow because I've got another video planned. Uh, Take care, guys.